All right, uh, let's talk some more about the chip story coming out of Taiwan. Jenny Horn, host of Next Gen. This time we're talking Intel because they don't want to get left too far behind, but it does kind of feel like the market has given up hope. Just yeah. judging by the chart for Intel. I mean, it's down 30 and 40% this year. It does look like we've given up hope here. But I have to say, there, there was actually things that I thought was, was compelling about their, their keynote address last evening. Wasn't as like monumental as what we heard from AMD or NVIDIA yesterday, frankly. But we did see this flurry of chip announcements overall. I mean, I'd say one major, major highlight was their AI PC chip code named Lunar Lake, which is expected to start shipping in PC makers in the third quarter. So amid what has been a very increasingly competitive environment, obviously, given the chart of Intel, like we both said, I think that right now they're trying to carve out their niche. So both NVIDIA and AMD have laid out timelines for their AI model training and inference that goes into 2027. Qualcomm and ARM, though, are both focused on this opportunity to then steal PC market share away from, like, I mean, a name like Intel. So I think that you have to keep in mind that these operate in, like, all different worlds, obviously. But what is it fascinating to me is that Intel did provide some of the pricing details on its Gaudi 2 and 3, which are their chips that are trying to take on NVIDIA and AMD for these AI data center workloads, which is, are seen as, like, the most high demand. I mean, mm -hmm. as far as, like what is winning in AI, it seems like it's everything tied to data centers. Then they did say their standard kit that includes eight Gaudi 2 accelerators will be offered for an average price of around $65,000. That's about a third of the next comparable competitor. And then the eight processors that include the Gaudi 3s will carry a list price of around 125000 which is a price Intel says is two-thirds out of its rival. Okay. This is kind of interesting to me because maybe Intel, while they're late and they're yeah. behind... Cheaper. Cheaper. Yeah. That's kind of what I've heard as being the primary uh, narrative for the competitors is like, all right, we're not going to be able to beat them. Right. But what could we offer? We'll Undercut go, them. Yeah, we'll go the, uh, you know, the store brand route. It's like, you know. The yeah. trade down effect, but it was yeah. in the, the dupe. Yeah, the dupe. The dupe, to use the uh, Gen Z term, right? So I the cheaper alternative. You see, now, and I wonder, because, like, we talk about, like, the processing capabilities of NVIDIA's chips, I think, are, are, are still far greater. I mean, there's a reason they're superior, but in a world where companies, like, every corporate company, it seems like, is pulling back on some of their, like, frivolous spending, hey, cheaper might not be a bad sure. thing. Yeah, totally. Uh, especially, also, there's going to be limited supply, too, uh, to some extent. You know, if there's a lot of demand, then you kind of can uh, plug in your own uh, lesser alternative, perhaps, but also literally cheaper, so there could be a market for that. Uh, the shares are okay this morning. I mean, they're up a little bit. I know, I'm like, how are we not reacting more to this? I mean, yeah. this is like, to me, almost like an earnings type catalyst for Intel, a name that needed it with a low bar, and we're not doing a whole lot of anything. So that's frustrating, I guess. But I do feel like the story with Intel still is going to be long term. But I mean, in this market, you've run out of patience, I think, because like they have good developments in the pipeline. Like they have all these major, major manufacturing projects we have in Arizona, but they're like not expected to really come to fruition until like yeah. 2027 to 2030. The market doesn't seem to have a whole lot of confidence that they're going to be a major player for those hyperscalers and stuff. But OK, a little bit of a cheaper alternative works. I do think, though, too, some of the news we heard over the last 48 hours about, like, actual consumer products are arguably just as interesting for Intel because, I mean, that's still such a huge part of their market. Uh, and we've seen some reports about how the next generation of PCs and are going to be coming with all these, uh, you know, applications embedded in them. And, you know, at the end of the day, that may not be as big of a story or as big of a growth market as the hyperscaler uh, AI supply, but it still is an important one. No, there, I, I read a really interesting note. I mean, this is this is like related but separate on like Best Buy yesterday. Exactly. How, like, That's what I was be, thinking. Right. Yeah. And how it's going to be like this massive beneficiary because right now we're in a, a forced like cycle upgrade, which yes. is huge. I do, I do think like when you start, technology starts to get obviously like greater and greater, there is actually the need to be like, wait a second, like I'm not like, you know, able to keep up to speed. So you have to upgrade. And I think this is when you also get people like, paying premium yes you know when you actually can feel like you're buying into an advancement that you don't have well, that so was such a dead market for like the last year because everybody upgraded all their stuff during covid mm -hmm. so best buy was doing terrible you know uh, all the by the way everybody was watching dell's stock because of their relationship with nvidia but all their trailing numbers were miserable because of the pc market mm -hmm. similar thing with intel a bunch of amds also trailing data was weak because of the uh lack of demand for PC supply. So, you know, maybe it's not, you know, for the hyper growth narrative that we get for NVIDIA, but it's not bad. And it seems like Intel's going to be in the mix, at least with the Lunar Lake 
I don't like the right? name of it. Yeah. yeah and this might cool. get me into a Best Buy because, I mean, you're the only person I know that's been to a Best Buy in the last <laughs> decade. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. Thanks, Jenny.